So kids, <laughs> I'd like to welcome back one of the three directors, Steve Hoban, and he's going to help me introduce the rest of the team who's here. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to be pretty quick about this. I'll start by bringing Grant Harvey, my co-director. The, the third director, Brett Sullivan. Where are you, Brett? Come fast. Uh, okay. All right. And then uh, my co-producer, Mark Smith. Come on down, Mark. And, uh, and then we have uh, the uh, albino demon of Christmas, Krampus. Come on down, Rob Archer. And then uh, we have uh, the jolly old Viking, St. Nick, George Buzak. And, uh, and we have another hometown favorite, uh, the writer, Jason Filitro. Where are you, Jason? Yeah. There he is. Kind of incognito. This is the first time he's hanging out with us at a screening. Uh, I thought I'd kick it off. I, I love watching anthologies, but I'm curious how this package came together, whether or not the directors sort of created it, or it was written, and then you were discovered to team up. Uh, it was a, kind of a combination of things. We decided we wanted to do a Christmas movie, a Christmas horror movie, and uh, we had a little bit of money but not a lot of time. So we had to get a script together in about five or six weeks. So uh, we went out to a bunch of writers who we'd worked with over the years and asked them to pitch us short stories because we figured if we had four or five writers writing at the same time, we could get a script done more quickly than if we had one writer writing longer. And, uh, and that's what we did. We just decided we wanted to have each of the stories be a different kind of horror, so a creature story, a creepy kid story, that kind of thing. And, uh, and otherwise, uh, we just asked the writers to come up with ideas. And Brian back there had to wrangle all those writers, which... Yeah, <laughs> Brian works at Copper Heart. He's uh, in charge of development there. Actually, uh... Hi, everyone. <laughs> 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 Trying to weave all those stories together, that was a, that was a big job yes. for Brian. Yeah, it was really, really well done. Is there some questions from the audience? Wait, wait, can I just Oh, say yeah, something? go for it. Uh, I've, I've seen it a bunch of times already. You guys are the most fucked up audience we've seen. <laughs> you laughed at the crazy... There's someone dressed in a wedding gown. Um, okay. Uh, okay, you laughed at the parts that we find funny. We find some sick things funny. Uh, you jumped at the right parts. You're the best audience I've seen it with. I don't know. <laughs> or the worst yeah, audience. For sure, for sure, for sure. Did you know who, right off the bat, was going to direct, direct each story? Uh, it was actually really scheduled. Uh, we knew that uh, we were always going to have these two guys directing, and uh, Grant was the first one available, and so he had to shoot the stuff that took place in the snow. So the two forest stories, the Krampus chasing the family, and then uh, the Changeling story, we, we started shooting at the end of February, and we were really worried. We shouldn't have been worried. We had more snow than we had in 50 years in Toronto. Mm. So, but uh, well, we didn't know that, so we had to shoot that stuff fast, and Grant was only available then, so he had to do those two. And then uh, Brett was very busy at that time of the year, so he ended up doing the Teenagers in the Basement because that had to be shot then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he likes fucked up things, as he said. Um, yeah, and that's how it worked. And then the last two were the, uh, were the Santa versus the Zombie Elves and the DJ Dan stuff. Cool. Yeah. Do we have any questions? Uh, it's a, yeah, so he, it was uh, really just luck. We have a, a friend in common, and uh, we were looking for somebody that had a lot of personality because he had to be alone. He wasn't acting against other actors for the most part. So it had to be somebody that had real presence, somebody who was really charming and also funny. So we put a list together, and uh, he was on the top of the list. And we thought, well, we'll never get him. Uh, but then asked this friend of ours, and he said, oh, sure, I'll ask him. And he just said, yeah. He read the script that Jason wrote and uh, thought it was so funny and decided to do it. <laughs> oh, is that over there? Okay. Oh, Everyone asked that. It's, uh, and uh, I said this earlier to Jason. It's, uh, Jason wrote every single word that Shatner said. He didn't make any of it up. I mean, he sold it so well, it seems like it's ad lib. But it's, it's like this Vulcan mind meld between <laughs> Jason and Shatner. Yeah. 
questions? I, uh, go oh, ahead. Uh, yeah. It was just the Shatner part. So we actually shot that a couple months after we finished the rest of the film. And it was that actually Mark's, the reason Shatner's in the movie is because of Mark. We were going to get a local Toronto actor to do it, to do it within our really tight schedule. And then Mark said, why don't we just wait? Just, you know, finish the rest of the movie, cut it together, and then get Shatner when we can or whoever we were going to. And then uh, the way to do that, though, was to fly down to L.A. and uh, shoot it pretty quickly. Yeah. Somebody's got to have a question for Santa. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I love Krampus's costume. Yeah, so why do you guys, like, hate Christmas? <laughs> 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 we, 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 we love Christmas. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, exactly, yes, yes. You're just putting a new look on Christmas. <laughs> yes, yes. Did you on the side still have a question? Your question came up and I said, do I know what Paul Bunyan was? <laughs> uh, that was the writer James Key who wrote that section. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and actually we kind of, we, that story was such a great story and one of the tricks of making this kind of anthology where the stories weave in and out of each other, we kind of had to take away some of the really funny stuff that James put in there because it was so broad and comic, it wasn't quite the tone of our movie. So we'd, I'd love to make just a short film with the original script that he wrote. It was uh, even funnier. <laughs> a little goofy. Yes? Did Santa have to work out? <laughs> Santa's been working out for a long time. <laughs> so Santa killed it. <laughs> Santa killed yes, Santa killed, killed it. Yes. Yeah. And, and it was it was uh, it was minus twenty six when this dude was in his gaunch out of there. <laughs> I had to pee sitting down for three days after I shot my scene. I was like a frightened turtle. <laughs> Actually, just a little bit about that, because the, the Krampus stuff was really the hardest stuff to do. This guy had to go into makeup application for about eight hours. Then he had to travel up to set. And then he had to be in like minus 25 in just his loincloth and, uh, and his 4% body fat to protect him. <laughs> <laughs> And then shoot for 20 or 21 hours, yeah. uh, or 12 hours, so it was about a 21-hour day for you. Yeah, any, the the shortest day was 18 hours, and the com most common day was 22 and a half. Then he was sick for two weeks after the scene in the stables. Yes. Because <laughs> you but, kicked his ass. But, but Didn't that? Yeah! Oh, you're not worth it? Yeah. It's absolutely worth it. Yeah. It, was an, it was an incredible character, actually. Um, is there any more questions? Is there one more there? Yeah. It's a long story. I, I produced one a, a while back, a remake of a movie called Black Christmas, yeah. and uh, it was uh, very poorly released by Dimension. They released it on Christmas Day, so it ended up being doing so-so at the box office. And every single year, the Christmas movies would start coming out, and I keep saying, shit, I should be doing Black Christmas 7. And then so just one year, Mark <laughs> and I were talking, and I said, let's just make a Christmas horror movie. And that was it. That's, that's what led to it. Um, Sorry, am I doing your thing? Oh, no, go for it if you'd like, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, was it the Christmas cookies that drove the elves insane, or, or did they just have enough of making toys? Uh, that's a very good question. It's, uh, we had different, different options before we realized partway through the script that, in fact, they weren't elves at all. But originally, they were going to be elves, so I can't remember what the reasons were. Right. Do you? We tried cookies. We tried it. Yeah. That's right, poison cookies, yeah, lace cookies. Perfect. Fruitcake, yes, that would do for me. <laughs> there you go. By the direction of the audience, it was fun. Was it always intended to be a funny movie? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it was, the idea was to make it funny and scary and original. So hopefully it did most of that. Well, it can't be not quite. It's, uh, that's why he didn't direct the funny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did y'all go down to like Bavaria and Tyrol and all that to look at, like, experience the Krampus? Oh, I, I wish we had. Yeah, we we should should yeah. that wasn't in the budget. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This was a very low budget movie. You made it as far as Richmond Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, out of curiosity, the 
father is drinking a propeller beer, which is uh, from Nova Scotia. Any reason why? Yes. Uh, yeah, do you want to answer that? Mark? Yes. Our, our amazing production designer, Tim Bider, is one of the owners of Propeller. So that's a product placement for him. <laughs> and, and free for us. So. Low budget. There you go. They were a little more like this, but nothing like that. Yeah. They, they were little people. They were, yeah. uh, and some of them were stunt people who were a little bit. Oh, sorry. They, they were all the elves before they turned into zombie elves were real little people, and then uh, during the shooting, some of the shots were done with stunt guys who were just short. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, they were little people. We beat the crap out of a bunch of little people. There's some tossing going on there too, I noticed. There, there was indeed from that guy. We even did it after we stopped shooting. And did you have to go through any, like, um, uh, test audiences to sort of get the weave of all the stories together? Yeah, yeah we always do. Yeah. We, uh, I mean, it's really small audiences. We just kind of do it in the office and get 10 or 12 people to come. And it was really tricky because we had edited the movie together, the script stage, and then realized when we first cut it together, it was really bad. It's because uh, it's we had, we went from one story to another to another and then back again, and we realized that didn't work at all because the uh, pacing was all wrong. So really, the audience helped us a lot. For a little while, I really thought it was going to be a disaster. That's <laughs> well, true. true. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Jason, what about you? Because this is the first time you've seen it, or have you seen it before? I've never seen it before. I thought it was. A, I think it's great. I really had. A, I, I think it was fantastic. Your vision and fun. came to life. I, I didn't have a vision, of it, but it was great. <laughs> I just got to write fun jokes yeah. for William Shatter enough to actually make a story out of it. But the stories were fantastic. I liked it. Uh, you? I don't, um. <laughs> yeah, well, I was—I love the audience reactions. So I yes. thought it was amazing. Yes. First time I saw it, I saw it by myself. So, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, it's very different. Experience. You know, when you watch yeah. a screener, you just—it's hard to sort. You have to picture as a programmer what it's going to be like in a full house. So, and it's was it? Yeah, it was awesome. Great, good. Yeah, yeah it was really right. fun to watch it with you guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for coming. Woo! Merry Christmas.